Hi everybody, my name is Mackenzie Herber and I am here with Michael Scott, our in-house CFA. Today we are going to be talking about quarter four 2022, but before we do that, we'd love for you to head over to our blog at candorpath.com forward slash blog to go read Michael's latest article. He did such a great job at summing up the last quarter of the year and giving us a little bit of insight to what we may expect for the new year. Um, so I'd love to just go ahead and jump right into this, Michael, if you could just touch base a little bit about what 2022 is like for our investors. In your article, you mentioned going to a theme park. Can you um, elaborate a little bit about how that correlates to our investors in 2022? Yeah, Mackenzie. So uh, on the surface level, I'm sure those listening think back and say, you know, 2022 in a theme park doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Like theme parks are supposed to be fun and joyous and 2022 is kind of rough for investors at different times, right? Uh, but recently, I uh, had the opportunity to go to Universal and do this really cool VIP tour, right? And breakfast is included, lunch is included, and they kind of guarantee you that you can do 10 to 12 rides um, in a day. And you get a tour guide that takes you uh, through all the lines. You don't have to wait in anything straight to the front. Um, and you get to experience all the different things that you know, Universal and Islands of Adventure has to offer. Not a commercial for them, but it's a really cool thing. And uh, as the day was going by, uh, what started off is a lot of excitement thinking about it because I love roller coasters. And, you know, we hit four or five different roller coasters and things in the day. What started off being really exciting, by the end of the day, we kind of took a step back and the group I was, I was like, was this really a good idea? Like, I feel a little nauseous. Our neck and back is hurting a little bit. Uh, and just the overall day, just kind of feel like it took a lot out of you. Then we're kind of joking around about it. And I think for investors, that's kind of how they felt as 2022 came to an end, right? And if we think back, um, there was a lot of excitement to start the year. Um, we had just come off a great year in 2021. The economy's reopening. Um, there was a lot of growth. Um, and we thought that was going to continue into 2022. Um, and you know, the year started off a little bit choppy and we, you know, we call it a correction at different times. And, you know, I think most investors are okay with having some volatility in the markets. Nobody likes when the market goes down, but if you're in the market, you understand that things don't go straight up all the time. Um, what got to be really uncomfortable for investors is that, you know, throughout the year, the market kind of grinded more and more to the sideways, or, you know, we set some different lows and, you know, one was somewhere around June, you know, and, and we rallied in August only to set like a new low in October. And I thought about it when I was doing a reflection on 2022 is, you know, it's kind of like that day at Universal where, you know, you ride a couple of roller coasters and, you know, that's fine. You don't mind the ups and the downs. You, you, you may get a little nauseous. But once you have lunch and you hop on your fifth ride that's spinning you around, um, you start to think, was this really a good idea after all? And I think for a lot of investors, they had that thought because 2022 wasn't a great year for many investors across the board. Yeah, well, you say that 2022 wasn't great for investors. What were some reasons for that? Yeah, so uh, quick um, framing this for you, you know, in the stock market, we look at three major indices, generally speaking. You know, we look at the S&P, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. And the S&P, which is like a you know, a mix of the two, if you will. Um, it, it it was down about 18%, give or take a little bit, right? The NASDAQ was down much more negative, down around 28 to 30% for the year. Um, and the, the Dow Jones was down only around 6 or 7% for the year. Um, and you compare that with uh, the bond indexes, you know, the, the you know, your aggregate bonds, they were down 12%, double digits. Um, so for investors, whether you were in stocks or bonds, you felt the decline, which was kind of interesting. It was one of, the, one of the first times in a long time that owning bonds didn't really support the portfolio like it had in years past. And, you know, we find that, or the, the cause of that, you know, dates back to 2020. And I know we've talked about this before, um, and I'm sure everyone listening doesn't want to go back to 2020 and talk about it again. But, you know, COVID sprung upon us and we put these different policies in place. And whether that was, you know, shutting down uh, businesses for a period of time, shutting down schools, um, and we put these different uh, policies into effect to take care of people 
um, when these things occurred. So, you know, we gave out stimulus checks. Um, we changed uh, tax credits around. We gave out PPP loans to businesses. And the thought behind that was let's support those that are facing extra costs or see their income go down. And it's all very well intended. Um, and we got this idea coming out of the great financial crisis where we gave out stimulus payments to help pay for things, to kind of stimulate the economy. Um, but there was one key difference this time. Back in 2009, uh, when we gave out those payments, there was a glut of goods. If you remember, there was the cash for clunker situation where the government would give you extra cash to go trade in your old car to get a new car. Why well, to take care of the auto dealers? You know, there was plenty of cars around. Fast forward to 2021, in late 2020, there was a shortage of cars, but there was not a shortage of people that wanted to buy a new car. And we kind of got this effect where there was so much money moving around chasing a shortage of goods. And that began this inflationary pressure. Um, and different things occurred over the next you know, year, 18 months after that, um, that put more pressure on inflation up, whether it was you know, home prices, lumber prices, um, shipping prices, energy, there's, there's a ton of different prices, but inflation began to get out of hand. And that's when the Federal Reserve steps in and they raise interest rates. And when they raise the interest rates, that's what really um, brought down asset prices. That's what really gave the stock market and the bond market um, a lot of pause and, and created the pullback. Um, and that relationship's most easily understood when you look at the bond market. The Federal Reserve raises interest rates, bond prices fall. And it's a simple explanation. But Mackenzie, if I give you a bond that pays 2% today, and a year from now, I offer someone a bond that pays 4%, um, and then give them the choice between buying your bond at 2 or their bond at 4 most people want the bond that pays them 4 So you have to lower the price of your bond equal to that to make the yields equal. So that's how bond prices come down. On the equity side, it's a little bit more complicated and there's there's different reasons why, but essentially businesses, their earnings became challenged. They began to make less money. Um, and, and at the same time, what earnings they did have became less valuable because we, it's a, it's a mathematical formula, but we discount future earnings by interest rates. Um, so companies become less valuable, so their stock falls. Um, and it just so happened that both of those happened in the same year. And we really experienced a drawdown, whether you were a stock investor or a bond investor or had a blend of the two. So with that being said, what can we expect for, you know, the new year, 2023? 2023 is going to be an interesting year. And um, I say that because it really kind of feels like, you know, it's a 50-50 it's a good or a bad year. And that may not be the most comforting thing to hear to investors, but when we look at the situation, you know, what are we concerned about? Um, you know, the difference between December of 2022 and January of 2023 is a couple days and an artificial line in the sand, right? There's nothing that different from two weeks ago. Um, we still have inflation that is too high. We have interest rates that are high. You know, we're still concerned that bank earnings, or not bank earnings, but company earnings could fall. Um, and we don't want that to happen. We're worried that businesses could lay people off. But um, one of the reasons that we're really excited for 2023 is that consumers and businesses seem to be weathering this inflationary environment and this high interest rate environment well. Uh, you know, we as uh, Americans and as consumers, we spend our money. We don't save it very well. And that is working, making its way through the economy. So we're seeing businesses um, act resiliently. They, they want to keep their products on the shelves. So they order, they, they produce things, and they don't want to get rid of all these workers they've spent the past 18 months trying to hire. So we're not seeing the layoffs that you would normally see looking at, at potentially a recession, right? Um, it's a little, it's, it's different. And when we look at consumers, um, you know, they're still, you know, they've seen wage increases. Other than 2022, they saw the markets go up for the past, you know, 10 years. There was hiccups at different points in time. And you know, it's a blanket statement. But um, overall, people have done well for the past 10 years. 
So there's a lot to be positive about in the markets, and we're not necessarily um, scared about what 2023 might bring, but we're just aware that our issues haven't disappeared, but they're not playing out as negatively as they could have. And that's kind of positive at the moment for us. So when we think about that, and we think about what investors can do, the best thing they can do here is review their financial life to start the year. Right? We have this we have this opportunity to make some changes at the beginning of the year. We've seen a little bump in the equity markets. Does your allocation still make sense from stock to bonds? Do you own the right things? You know, are you concerned? Are you saving enough or are you saving too much? Have that conversation with your advisor, whether that's myself or John or Matt. Um, we're here to take take a look at it and take a breather and set ourselves up for 2023, no matter what it brings. Um, but that's kind of that's kind of how we're positioning it and our, our number one advice to to clients at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Michael, for elaborating on your article. And again, if you haven't had a chance to read that, you can find it on our website at candorpath.com forward slash blog. Go over and give it a read. And if you have any additional questions after watching this, please don't hesitate to reach out to Michael, John, or Matt. I know that they would love to help, um, but we hope you all have a great day and thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.